Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a detailed look at the new free add-on from Chip Walters. So this is Simple Line, if you just hit N and go to your tools you get the Simple Line tab. Now Chip's already done a great video on this, I'll put a link to that in the description, so I'm not going to go through the basics of how this works, so obviously I'll show you that as part of the process. I just want to talk through this in a bit more detail, so you understand how this appears to be working, so you can get good predictable results from it. And hopefully this will give you some tips and tricks of how you can manipulate this to serve your own ends. So, let's just deal with the basics of how this works. We'll ignore this object at the bottom and just focus on these. So, we've got two options, Align and we have Distribute. And as I said, we're going to go through these in a bit of detail. So what I'm going to do is select these objects, and you'll notice with them all selected like that, none of them is the active object. I have my selected objects outlined in green and my active objects in blue as I find that an easier way to see things. There's a link to a video on how to set that up in the description as well. So what we're gonna do is pick an angle. I want to be working from this angle, so that's the angle where I can see the Y axis and the Z axis more fully. So we go to Y to Z and we get this on a side view. So we don't even have to click this, which makes it work and then go into the side view. It does it all for us, though we can leave this not in a side view as long as we remember where we were. I'm going to stick the for that side view for now, just so we can see things clearly. We need to have an active object, so let's select this one. Now I want to align these, and this works off the view from this angle vertically. So I want them centered for this, none of the others really make sense for what I want to do. So we're going to click there, and they're going to perfectly center off of each other. Now, here's the thing that we need to understand here. This does not work off the origin, the dots in the center of these objects. Now this is a blessing and a curse because we're probably quite used to things working off the origin, but it does mean, like say we go into this object and then just G and Z those vertices up, that we don't have to worry about repositioning origins if we want this to be functional. So say for example I select these and this is the active object and I want it to align vertically, you'll notice that it is aligned to the center of this object, not to where the origin is. And I'm pretty sure this is because this works off of bounding boxes and averaging out where that bounding box is. So this is really important to realize. And do note, if I just move this one up, it's not just if we're using this as being the active object, if I select these as well, so using the sphere as the active object, this will move to the active object or align with it from its bounding box center. Now a lot of the time this just doesn't matter if we come to the top down view because a lot of the time the origin is going to be the center so if we just align these horizontally that's made no difference at all it effectively has been where the origin is so that is the align now actually if we just stay in that top down view let's just quickly cover the other types of alignment so if we select here and we hit horizontal then we're going to get this line up perfectly and this time it's still using the bounding boxes and it's using the edge of the bounding box. So this is setting the outer edge of our large cube as the bounding box to go to and then the outer edge of the bounding box of each of our other objects is being pushed up to that. Now again, this can cause some odd results or at least what might feel like odd results if we bring that out here and do exactly the same thing to the left. We get this and again, this one isn't very centered. But this isn't really a problem, or at least I don't think it's a problem, because if you do want this centered off the other ones, all you do, let's do it to the right this time, is align horizontally, unselect that, select one of the other ones, and then align to center, and you've got it sorted. So this is pretty easy to deal with, to be perfectly honest. So do just bear in mind how this can be manipulated. So with that in mind, at this point, let's talk about distribution. Now once again, distribution works off of the bounding boxes of the objects selected and the active object. So let's just select these with the cube being the active object and we're gonna distribute vertically. So we'll click here. So what that has done is moved the center of each of our objects to the bounding box edge of the active object and then distributed any other objects to the center equally spaced. So for example, I could just bring in another one here and just do exactly the same thing again, and we're gonna get a good, perfect distribution. So this makes this really quick and easy to modify. Let's just delete that out for a second. The other options that we've got is we can distribute things so that they're perfectly inside the bounding box of the active object, so just there, and perfectly outside the bounding box of the active object, so again there. But 
once again, this does work off of the bounding boxes of the objects being selected. So for example, if I make this bigger by quite a way, we're gonna get a slightly weird result. You'll notice that this one is not centered on this object. The reason being that this function has taken this bounding box and moved it to the outside of this, and it's done it for this one as well. And then it works out where the center point between our two objects are, and then put that in the middle, which means it's now not in the middle of this object. Again, simple solution. We could just align this to the center of that. So it's not a really big problem, but it is just something to be aware of. Now, one other thing that I want us to be aware of, let's just change these down in size a bit. And then I'm gonna take this and scale it on the X axis a bit like this is that again, this is working all off bounding boxes. So I've got this, this, and this. I'm just gonna G and X this across a bit, is that this can lead to some unpredictable results because again, the way this makes assumptions is based off of the bounding boxes. So let's say I want to put these objects in a perfect line across this object here. Well, this should be relatively easy to do. Let's select these, let's distribute these to the outside edge, easy. And now we're gonna distribute them horizontally across the outside edge. Oh, well this doesn't seem right. So why has this happened? Well, what this add-on does, as far as I can tell, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I have played around with this quite a bit now, is it makes assumptions about where the bounding boxes are and where you want them to end up. Now this object has its bounding box center, again, we're not using origins, more to the left than these two objects. So the simple line tool is going to assume that that is the one that we want most to the left. Whereas if we compare these two, this one, the cone at the top, has got its bounding box center most to the right. Whereas the sphere has its bounding box center, well, central to the other two. So once again, if we do this horizontally, we actually get the result that we expect now that we understand this. So my thing to do with this is just help it along a bit is if I want this to be in a diagonal line like this, then I'll just move this slightly off to the side. There we go, let's distribute these vertically inside and then horizontally and we get the result that we want. Now one thing to be slightly careful of is that again, this works off the bounding box center of the two outside objects. So if I again just make this wider here, so we can do this to the bounding box the inside, you'll notice that this object here, its center of its bounding box is being determined by these two other objects. So this hasn't quite worked. Whereas if we did this and then did it to the horizontal and vertical centered, because these are symmetrical objects, this has worked out in the center. So we could always do that to center it and then just take these and distribute them there and there if that's where we want this to be. So again, very easy to manipulate if we want to use this. A couple of other ways that I quite like manipulating this, and I'll just talk through them, is say we want to have these objects sitting on top of this. We can do that relatively easily. We just do a couple of different things. So let me just shift and D. We can do this in two different ways. The first is I can select these and these. So we're currently on the Z and X. So let's go to Z and X. Is if I want these on top, what I can just do is distribute this vertically so that one object is on the outside. You can see we've got that here. Again, this works out where the bounding box centers were. And then I can just unselect that and then select the cube and then align these vertically. And it kind of works, but here it hasn't worked perfectly because they're different sizes. So what I might have to do is there and then select off this object, select that one, align them vertically there. So because these are a different size, that's a slight bit of a faff. But if they're the same size, that would work in two clicks. The other option, if we go into face mode, shift and D to duplicate that face, P and separate by selection, what we've got now is this cube, that's just H to hide it, and this plane. Well, because this plane has an infinitely thin bounding box, if we select that in this plane, we're still working from the front X and Z, even though I've come at this angle so we can see it. What we could do is align these vertically with our object bottoms going to our infinitely thin bounding box. So that will end up with them sitting on top of it perfectly, even though they're all different sizes. And then we could either H to hide this plane and bring back our cube or just delete the plane if we need to. So that's one fun manipulation. 
The other one that I really like, and this is where I'm probably going to end up using this most of all, is if we wanted to do rivets on this object. So for example, and again, there's several ways of doing this. Let's just bring in a quad sphere. Let's scale this down. And what's really nice about this using these bounding boxes is that the scaling makes no difference. I'm not going to have to apply anything here. Is that about the right size for a rivet? Maybe. Let's just make multiples of these. I haven't done that very exactly. So what we're going to do is just select all of these. I'm going to come into my front view again. Let's just get these aligned. We're going to distribute them vertically with the center of our object on the top surface of the bounding box. Then we can unclick this and click this and then just align them vertically centered. So there we go. That's worked out. Two clicks really quick. It's just taking me a bit longer because I've been describing it. And then again, we could align these from the top perfectly to the side and then distribute them vertically so that they're all on the inside. It's okay, but probably not exactly where I want it to be. So we've got two options. We could, well, just bring one of them off to the side and then just align with that active part. So there, but let's just bring that back. I don't think that's the most useful way of doing it. What I prefer to do is just get this face I to inset it. So this is going to be where our rivets are. And then I'm just gonna select an edge and then shift and D once again, P and separate that by selection. So now we've got this edge just here. To make this easier, I'm gonna press F2 and rename that rivet edge. So we can see that here. And now what I can do is select these. And once again, remember that this edge has got this infinitely thin bounding box. The only way that it's got a bounding box that makes much difference is in this Y axis. So now with that as the active object, I can align these horizontally so they're gonna be perfectly there. And then I can distribute them along this vertically. So the centers of the moving object are going to the far reach of this bounding box that's infinitely thin, but only anything worth noting on the y-axis. Again, if I decide that I want this being slightly moved, I could go, actually, let's change this horizontally to there or horizontally to there, so I can tweak either side of the line or centered. I really like that. It gives me a little bit of things to play around with. And I can do the same thing. Let's decide that I want them there so we can see this line a little bit more clearly. And I can distribute them vertically where we are, or I could have them perfectly inside. So now, notice that this works out in terms of the gap that's to this edge here and this edge here. Or I could go the opposite way and have them distributed vertically to the outside so it's all here. And with me going that side, this again looks pretty perfect. So we've got lots and lots of ways of manipulating this for our different functionality. Now this was meant to be the point in the video where I said the only real flaw that I can find in this add-on is that we can't manipulate things by the origin, which would be really handy so we don't always have to get everything centered in the middle. So if we just go to our top view, we said that this was a limitation in that everything got perfectly centered. However, you will now notice that I'm in version 1.2 and this has already been updated. And now we have this really nice button to use the origins instead of the box, which means now with these two cubes, and you'll notice that the origin isn't centered, which you might have for some reason. Let's say, for example, we wanted to do something where the origin was a certain distance away from this edge. We can now align everything to our origin. Now there is a slight limitation on this and it's one that we need to be aware of. It still works off of the center of the bounding box of the object that's been selected. So for example, if I select these and then do that to center, it's gonna to go to the center of this object's bounding box as opposed to the origin. But all we do is just select an object that has got its origin in its center and use that instead. And we've got that all sorted which is great. And once again, we can do things on larger objects and for example, align to that side. Whereas before, if we didn't do that, it went to the edge of the bounding box. Now it does it to the origin. And we can do similar things with distribute, though obviously it's only gonna use these. So let's say for example, I expanded this out on the face. Here, we've got two options now. We can distribute this vertically using the center of each bounding box. So you'll notice this one isn't centered by its origin or we can do it by the origin and we'll get that now centered off of its origin. So 
the one flaw that I could find in this has now been solved. And I think this is pretty much perfect. But let me know what you think of it in the comments section. I believe the plan is that this is going to be put up on Superhive and then on Superhive it's going to be like a dollar because there's a minimum amount. You can also get it on Chipwater's Patreon which is only two dollars a month so do consider using one of those two and supporting this great add-on producer or you can go to his Discord and join up there and it's available free so you've got loads of ways of accessing this. As always, I'll make the standard request that I try to leave at the end of videos so it doesn't disrupt things and ask you to hit that like button if you found this of any use. It really does help me out and the channel out with things like the YouTube algorithms that determine if people are even going to see this video in the first place. Hope to see you in the next one and have a great day.